RAF Uxbridge, the home of discipline, dignity and decorum. But not this week. This is a comic football match held at Uxbridge on the occasion of National Savings Thanksgiving week. Many have been the battles fought on these playing fields, but never has there been one like this. Make your own rules, nothing barred, and everything goes. of the game, prizes were given. Cakes of soap, boot laces, or anything else that came to hand. And the captain of the winning team, quite overwhelmed by his victory, was presented with the cup, a magnificent trophy of silver-plated cod. Production 26. Some time ago, we showed you a film in the making, a film produced and acted by members of the RAF. At that time, it was impossible to tell you where the studio was located. Like everywhere else, it was somewhere in England. Today, we're able to tell you that somewhere in England was Pinewood Studios. Now that Production 26 is finished, you can see it at your local under the name of Journey Together. The premiere of this film was held at the Odeon Cinema, Leicester Square, and a crowd of some 8,000 people watched the arrival of many prominent personalities. Many film tributes have been paid in the past to bomber, fighter and coastal commands. But on this occasion, Flying Training Command, the few who trained the many, came into its own. Most of the leading personalities of the fighting services were present. It was a big night, particularly for Air Marshal Sir Philip Babington, former Chief of Flying Training Command. Admiral of the Fleet Lord Cunningham, First Sea Lord, was there, with other high-ranking naval officers. Marshal of the Royal Air Force Sir Arthur Tedder and Lady Tedder arrived to face a battery of cameras. After chatting for a while with Air Commodore Lord Willoughby de Brooke, they joined the father of the Air Force, Viscount Trenchard. <music> Members of the Cabinet included the Minister for Civil Aviation, Lord Winster, who looked at the top of his form, and also the Secretary of State for Air, Viscount Stansley. Many leading lights of the British film industry came along. Michael Powell, director of Colonel Blimp, brought Mrs. Powell and introduced his new star from America, Tim Hunter. Roger Livesey and actress wife Ursula Jeans. Stuart Granger came with Sandra Storm and impresario Jack Dunphy. Gabriel Pascal, producer of the million pound Caesar and Cleopatra. Captain Roy Belty, director editor of the famous Desert Victory. Trevor Howard, star of Brief Encounter. Sheila Sim, star of Canterbury Tales. The principal players of Journey Together Sergeant Richard Attenborough and Jack Watley. In all, it was a grand send-off for a grand film. This is the story of Winnie the Waff, who ably supported the men of the RAF. For a daily rate of, well, three and a tanner, she handled a wheel or wielded a spanner. In snow and sleet or rain and mud, she hauled the wire or peeled a spud. With a winning smile or a graceful nod, she folded a shoot or carted a bod. For silks and satins, she cared not a hoot, but just carried on in her old blue suit. She's played her part well as our little Winnie, and now all she asks is a brand new penny.
We're presenting this item specially for the ladies, so just relax, chaps, and sit this one out. This fashion show, given by John Lewis of Oxford Street, was staged exclusively for girls in the forces. Fur coats add glamour, but first of all, one should consider everyday wear. Remember, many of you will be starting your wardrobe from scratch and you'll want your grant of £12.10 to go a long way. Today, many well-known houses are making inexpensive clothes of good quality and design. For example, this woolen dress, beige with green and gold stripes, costs £2.01. shilling. The jacket is the top half of a cardigan suit, costing £3.16.5. A black coat is an asset to any wardrobe. This one's fully lined and costs only four pounds ten and ninepence. Here's a suit in navy blue, four pounds two and a penny. The coat is dark red this time, but again it costs only four pounds ten and nine. With garments like these, you can use your grant to the best advantage. For example, how about this for a basic outfit? A green coat, five pounds two and ten. A natural suit, four pounds seven and ten. Under the coat, a check skirt, one pound six and nine, and a turquoise jumper, nine and ninepence. Under the suit, a fawn blouse, one pound. Total cost, the whole works, twelve pounds seventeen and twopence. So, when it's your turn to get your civvies, make your choice carefully. And remember, planning's the thing. So let's look at Winnie on Old Civvy Street. For crying out loud, she fair looks a treat. Britain Day, 1945. The RAF opens its doors to the public for the first time in six years. And on many an airfield, people peer into planes to find out what makes them tick. But today, to the youth of Britain, War planes are but pieces of history. For on this September the 15th, the guns are silent. But things were very different on that other September the 15th. On that Sunday morning, it was radar that first gave warning of the coming storm. Warning of an enemy armada assembling in the Pas de Calais. The wires started to hum, wires that led to every gun site and airfield in southern England. As yet, the enemy was but a pattern on the radar screen a symbol on the plotting table. But these things told us that this was the biggest thing yet.
in spite of his losses, the enemy was breaking through by sheer weight of numbers. The Germans forced their way up the Thames to the outskirts of London itself. But in the factories, the wheels continued to turn. For here, final victory was in the making. The enemy had broken through, but he was given no chance to select his targets. For so persistent was our attack that accurate bombing became impossible. The harassed Germans let go their bombs at random. By this time, the battle was raging over a dozen counties, from Wimbledon to Shoebury Ness, from Dover to the Isle of Wight. At last, the watchers knew that the tide had turned, for the armada had broken up into lone raiders struggling to escape. So that day, we won a victory. A victory that opened the way to all the victories yet to come. El Alamein, Marath, Salerno, Casino, Caen, Falaise, the Rhine. For the victory of September the 15th won us time. Time to build, time to organize, time to finish the job. And so we, the many, honour the few. The few to whom final victory was but a dream. A dream for which they fought and died. <laughs>